Welcome all. So today I will give you a brief introduction to photoredox catalysis and its advantages. So I will start with a very famous quote from Professor Govardhan Mehta where he told that if in a distant future the supply of coal becomes completely exhausted, civilization will not be checked by that for life and civilization will continue as long as the sun shines. So this means that sunlight can be utilized as a very important source of energy in our society. One of the most uh, common and very popular photochemical reaction we are familiar with is the photosynthesis where carbon dioxide and water molecule could be converted to sugar molecule in presence of chlorophyll photosensitizer and light energy. So sunlight falls in the leaves of the tree where chlorophyll is present and the solar energy is converted to chemical energy through this particular reaction. This is a very important reaction for chemists and we are much more devoted ourselves to understand and mimic this particular strategy where we could utilize sunlight as a source of chemical energy. The society is also much interested to use sunlight as a renewable energy source and we can see that the world is much more focused towards utilizing renewable energies in the modern society and in this case sunlight is the most prominent one because it will remain till the civilization exists as we believe and as professor Mehta has rightly mentioned now as a synthetic chemist what is our focus the focus is that if we can convert this sunlight energy or solar energy to chemical energy so we can do it by utilizing semiconductor materials, metal complexes, organic dyes and generally this area has been much more harvested in inorganic synthesis where the use of solar energy is much more prominent for water splitting reaction and proton reduction reaction to generate hydrogen gas. But in synthetic organic chemistry our interest is to perform organic reaction utilizing this. Now, before going to much details, I will just uh, give you a brief introduction about photocatalysis. So, photocatalysis is nothing but the acceleration of a chemical reaction by light using a catalyst. So, catalyst will activate the molecule in presence of light and facilitate it. So there are two different kind of photoreactions present. First is primary photoreaction and this is the elementary chemical process which happens when the organic molecule absorbs the light energy and it undergoes changes. And then after it is realized the changes and the organic molecule is in its excited electronic state, it undergoes some chemical transformation through the formation of several intermediates and these all reactions are termed as secondary photoreactions. Now if we talk about the benefits of this particular area of research that in the presence of visible light we can easily perform reactions through the generation of radicals. Because of the high energy of lights it can perform the homolytic cleavage of bonds and that generates radical. But mainly these are performed with UV lights and thus the selectivity becomes a very challenging issue. But uh, most important thing here is the use of less amount of reagents which is much more sustainable. So here we can just uh, generate radicals in presence of light. So that uh, do not need any additional chemical reagents and thus it becomes much more interesting for us. But to perform organic synthesis we have to address these particular challenges.
Now, if we look at the photosynthetic pathway, nature uses this particular protein consisting of a very complex organic molecule that is chlorophyll and all these are high molecular weight species. So if we want to use such a molecule for organic synthesis, this is not very practical because it will lead to atom economic uh, it will cost atom economy and that is that we become so challenging and we have to find suitable alternatives so indeed this is a uh, there and uh, we have found that ruthenium polypyridyl complexes or dyes such as yoshin y or rose bengal could serve the same purpose in presence of visible light as the mediator because uh, some photosynthesis happens in presence of visible light and we want to avoid UV light. So this few pigments could be utilized for organic synthesis. Now, what is the benefit of that? So if the photocatalyst absorbs visible light, it goes to its excited electronic state. And in its excited electronic state, it can act both as an electron donor or as an electron acceptor. Thus, it can be modulated based on the reaction condition where it can be used as a reductant or a single electron oxidant. So it is very useful in terms of synthetic organic chemistry. So here I have mentioned few of the very popular photoredox catalysts which are already been used by very uh, synthetic chemists. I have already told that ruthenium polypyridyl complex is a very useful photoredox catalyst as it works as a catalytic set reagent and it can be utilized in organic synthesis where it generates less amount of waste. Obviously because of the variable oxidation state in the ruthenium it can act as both as an oxidant and as a reductant. Now the primary features that we need in a photoredox catalyst is the long delayed excited state lifetime and visible light absorption. As we want to do visible light photocatalysis, thus visible light absorption in significant amount is necessary. Otherwise, we cannot perform the reaction in visible light. And second, the long lived lifetime is important. Otherwise, we will not realize the electron transfer between the photoredox catalyst and the substrate. Now I will discuss the inherent chemistry of this photochemical transformation. So first uh, I will talk about the orbitals in this particular complex where T2G orbital is filled and it has two electrons and uh, the pi star orbital is vacant and now when you shine light with this to this particular complex then one electron from t2g orbital will go to the pi star orbital and we have one vacancy in this particular t2g orbital if we add one acceptor in the reaction medium then what happens the electron in the pi star orbital is donated to the acceptor so acceptor is reduced and we have a species where the T2G orbital is not filled. So if you compare the ground state and the new catalytic species, so new catalytic species is ruthenium-3 species where the T2G orbital can accept one electron. So the oxidizing power is increased compared to the original ruthenium bipyridyl complex. If we want uh, to use one donor in the reaction medium, then the donor is a very prominent to donate one electron to the vacant T2G orbital and now T2G orbital is filled. So the sum of this particular catalyst is the pi star orbital. Now if we compare the ground state ruthenium polypyridyl complex and this newly generated species, so the electron can be donated from the higher energy orbital that is the pi star orbital and thus it acts as a better reductant. 
and this particular strategies could be utilized where we have already enhanced the oxidizing power or reducing power of the catalysts. Now, over the years, uh, several number of uh, photoredox catalysts have been designed and synthesized and some of them are commercially available also. So, these uh, two, these few catalysts are very useful and it has been found that many of them are very reactive to do some unconventional transformations and this uh, reaction follows the thermodynamics where redox potential and uh, free energy are crucial parameters. But if you look at the comparable reactivity of this photoredox catalyst, always metal based photocatalysts are much more effective because of their stable uh, excited states and they have a better excited state lifetimes. The early history of photoredox catalyst is uh, from 1978 when Professor Kellogg uh, devised this particular strategy where the molecule such as this could be reacted in presence of a ruthenium bipyridide complex in visible light in presence of this kind of tertiary amine. The desulfonylation happen and this desulfonylation uh, that is the carbon sulfon bond cleavage generates the acetophenone derivative. Obviously this is a very primary example long back. Later on Professor Derowinzer so showcased that ruthenium bipyridine complex can also be used to diagonium salt activation where this diagonium salt could be uh, reduced to generate aryl radicals and which can be trapped with the intermolecular fashion and this intermolecular cyclization could lead to phenanthrene derivatives. However, the earlier findings didn't find much application in organic synthesis. The renisha in organic synthesis came when Professor Macmillan came up with this particular strategy where he used organo catalyst in combination with photoredox catalyst to give a new transformation under visible light in the year 2008. So general strategy between aldehyde as a substrate in organocatalysis is that if we take an aldehyde in presence of a secondary amine, it can first form the enamine species and this particular strategy is called homoactivation. This uh, enamine with, uh, uh, can react with a particular electrophile to give us new functionalization where if we use an alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde then it can form an iminium species and this is called iminium catalysis where we can activate the LUMO of the organic molecule and thus we can do functionalization with suitable nucleophiles. So earlier these two approaches were known. However, later on Macmillan group came up with a new approach where radicals could be coupled with the generated enamine. These uh, reactions are ionic reactions and react with uh, ionic species. But in this particular case, it expands the library of reactivity through radical coupling. So what happens if we use the single electron oxidant in the particular reaction medium, then this enamine gets oxidized by the single electron oxidant and it generates a tertiary ammonium radical cation. Now this particular species can be trapped with a suitable radical species and we can generate new reactivity. And this particular strategy is called homoactivation or somocatalysis. He has explored this particular example for the synthesis of various new type of functionalization with aldehydes and with his very popular organocatalyst. 
But if you look at all these processes, this needs a stoichiometric amount of single electron oxygen, which is ceric ammonium nitrate or CAN. In this case, we need two oxygen that is CAN as well as ditertiary butyl peroxide. So they question whether we could avoid the use of such a large amount of transition metal based set oxidants. And then they thought photoredox catalyst, which is developed earlier long back in the literature, can be a good solution to this process. So what they thought, if the imenium species which could be generated in the reaction medium can be treated with a photoredox catalyst under visible light, then the excited state photocatalyst can accept one electron from this enamine and can generate the activated SOMO species, which is the tertiary ammonium radical cation. And it can undergo similar type of transformation to generate new product. And this product formation is combined with radical formation, which could also be generated through the reduction of the alkyl halides. So what happened? Alkyl halides can react with the anionic photoredox catalyst which is formed after the reduction with this particular tertiary amine species. So it is not obviously very stable species and thus donate one electron to the alkyl halide to generate alkyl radicals. Now this alkyl radical is trapped and we get the desired functionalization and get the photoredox catalyst back for the next catalytic cycle. So they have utilized this strategy for the functionalization of aldehydes and we can generate a good amount of a product with a reasonable selectivity. After the development of this strategy, here Professor Yoon group has performed a similar type of reaction using ruthenium bipyridine complex where they have performed a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition in presence of visible light. Generally 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reactions are performed under UV light. It cannot be performed under visible light because organic molecules generally don't absorb visible light. And thus it should be performed under UV light as organic molecules absorb that. Now, electrochemical approach was also known earlier and they have shown that 2 plus 2 addition between two olefins in intramolecular fashion is possible if we could electrochemically reduce one olefin or chalcone derivative to generate the single electron species or this radical species. And this radical species could realize this efficient transformation to give us that desired product. In a similar fashion, they thought the photoredox catalyst in presence of a quencher such as tertiary amine can also serve the same purpose. So they use lithium fluoroborate as the activator of this ketone and tertiary amine as the quencher for the photoredox catalyst. So photoredox catalyst first absorb visible light, goes to his excited state and in his excited state Photocatalyst can take one electron from the tertiary amine to generate ruthenium-1 species. And already I have mentioned that ruthenium-1 is a very strong reductant compared to ruthenium-2. This can donate the electron to this particular alpha beta unsaturated ketone to generate radical. And in similar fashion, it can undergo transformation to generate the desired cyclized product. So same way we could also transform organic molecules in presence of visible light. So these two findings have been revolutionized the synthesis pathways and now photoredox catalysis has been a very active area of research in organic synthesis. Now generally photoredox catalyst could work in two different ways. I have already told this, but I will just little elaborate this particular thing that it can serve as a good reductant. So if we have a photoredox catalyst, it absorbs visible light, goes to its excited state, 
if you have a donor molecule such as tertiary amine it can donate one electron to the photoredox catalyst to generate an ionic photoredox catalyst this is not very stable species donate one electron to the organic molecule which consists a living group so this living group goes as an anion and we can generate it a radical and this radical could be trapped with a suitable coupling partner and we can get a functionalization similarly photoredox catalyst can be utilized as an oxidizing agent so photoredox catalyst can similarly absorb visible light goes to its excited state and there if we have a donor substrate so substrate will donate one electron to the photoredox catalyst to generate the an ionic photoredox catalyst and as the substrate has donated one electron it now has become a radical species and this radical species can be trapped with a suitable coupling partner to generate the product and now the photoredox catalyst which is already reduced and that one can interact with the suitable acceptor it can be a part sulfate or any other acceptor such as air or oxygen so it will donate the electron to those kind of species and can regenerate the active catalyst in both the ways we can harvest the photoredox catalysts and we can generate new reactivity so first i will give you one example of photoredox catalyst where they have utilized this particular strategy for the functionalization and photoredox catalyst has been used as a reductant so this particular strategy i have already discussed how it can generate radicals so if we take alkyl halide it can react with a ruthenium bipyridine complex in presence of visible light where tertiary amine has been used as a quencher so it can eliminate the bromo species and can generate a carbon centered benzylic radical species in this position which could be trapped with the indole derivative and we can get a functionalization and this strategy can be utilized for the synthesis of natural products such as this other approach is also known that is also similar approach in the similar species under similar catalytic conditions could generate another benzylic radical which could be trapped with alpha beta unsaturated ketones and we can generate a new product which is highly functionalized and such kind of uh, reaction could be utilized for the synthesis of a natural product so this is a very effective method for organic transformation now another alternative approach which is the use of photoredox catalyst for oxidative functionalization so here the catalyst is little bit different and we use the acridine based catalyst for oxidizing arenes so here i will discuss about the amination of arenes direct ch amination process using acridine catalyst so what it does in this acridine catalyst in presence of visible light can goes to its excited electronic state and now it has been a very attractive and very strong oxidizing agent which could interact with a arene molecule and can generate arene cation radical so it will generate the arene cation radical and it will generate acridinium species consisting of one more electron in it that is the reduced species which could be reoxidized in presence of air or oxygen through the generation of superoxide radical anion and now the newly formed arene radical cation which is not a very stable species can be trapped with the amine present in the reaction mixture and we can get direct ch functionalization of arene with high reduce selectivity and this reaction is highly applicable with the different arene molecules and in many of them the functionalization is highly selective and even the particular strategy could be extended to direct amination of arenes or heteroarenes so overall i have discussed here about the basic introduction of photoredox catalyst where visible light is used 
as a tool in presence of a photorodox catalyst to perform organic reaction in step and atom economic manner. The reaction conditions are generally very mild and provides a very viable tool to give new kind of reactivity without using much amount of stoichiometric reagents. So thank you for watching this video. Please email me or text me in the comment section if you have any queries or suggestions. Thank you all.